10 years of calisthenics experience. Yeah, time flies fast, but it's important to constantly remind ourselves some lessons. So let's go with the first one. It's all about the small steps. Everybody wants to achieve all the skills tomorrow to progress really quick and to become the strongest athlete. However, it's not about how fast you progress, but how long you stay in the game with the progress. I've seen so many guys on the bars and only those who are persistent, who are setting their goals in accordance to their current level were having better results than those who were going more for the risky way, who are always chasing crazy results each training. Yeah, that's totally normal because there is a connection between the speed of the progress and the risk of injury. So the smaller goals you set from a training to a training, the smaller risk of injury you have. And conversely, if you're always trying to go hard each training, you see how, yeah, probably you progress really fast in a short term, but in a long term, that will lead to injury that will take you out for a significant amount of time that you could have used for progress if you were training a little bit more moderate. But of course, it's not all about uh, the speed of the progress and setting goals, but it's also about the way of training. That's why we go for the next topic, which is the fundamentals. Learn the fundamentals. Just like reading requires knowing the alphabet in the sport, there are some basic things that you need to know just from the beginning. And I see so many guys who are skipping the warm up, who are performing different skills by not a proper way, which eventually leads to injury. And of course, if you're 13, that's totally fine. But the older you are, the more valuable your time will be. And one injury means that you end up with less time in front that you can use for training. And yeah, in the end, everybody learns the fundamental things, but it's important to learn them the easy way rather than the hard way after being injured. And yeah, since I'm talking about the time and uh, the basic things, let's go for the third thing that I want to share with you. Less is more. It's been always a sign of a hard work to say, bro, I've trained for four hours, I've trained for five hours, but does it really matter? Well, in fact, it's really important as a beginner to understand that it's not about how many attempts you did, but it's about how you made it. For example, doing five attempts can be way more beneficial than doing 50 attempts with a questionable form. In the first case, you're having a better engagement and more time to think and to rest in between, while in the second, you're really rushing, you don't have time to observe the skills and you can potentially injure yourself. Of course, I'm not saying that you always need to have a perfect form. It's totally fine from time to time to allow yourself to go for a little bit more volume, but still with no more than 20-30% deviation from the perfect form. And of course, if we reduce the number of attempts and put more focus on the form, we'll also make the four hour training shorter, which will be beneficial in the long term, since as I said, our time is getting more and more valuable. Learn from your mistakes. Even if you train in the most professional way, the possibility of injury is always there. I have injured myself personally several times and I can say that the first time it was like a nightmare because I was not sure how to handle the situation and for how long it will last. Yeah, but you should not look at the injury as something bad, but as a possibility to improve yourself, to become better. And you need to analyze what caused the problem and also the problem itself. And you see how with each injury, you get less and less emotional and you know how to prevent it. Be strict, but not too much. I've been the guy who for a duration of two years has been writing all his trainings on the notes, each repetition, each holding time. Of course, that can lead to mental and emotional exhaustion and can make you feel the training more like a work rather than a pleasurable activity. It's absolutely possible to be in your best shape, in the best regime, but still lack of progress just because you lose the strife, you lose the motivation. And especially since I started traveling a lot around the world, like 10, 12 times a year, I found it almost impossible to be really, really strict just because I'm constantly changing the workout place and workout equipment. And that's why it's important to give yourself a certain amount of freedom to be flexible in accordance to the workout environment while still keeping the main direction. Be your best company. By that, I mean be comfortable to train alone. More than 90% of the guys that I initially started training with back in 2012 are not working out anymore. I realized that for some of them, it was more important the social aspect rather than the sport itself. Of course, it's nothing bad about the social aspect. It's the connections that are making the sport bigger. But the problem is that it's an outside factor that you depend on. And if you only count on that, once your friends are not training anymore, then you have no reason to continue. That's why I learned to be comfortable training alone and do it purely for the sport. The next time you go to the gym, you find it empty. 
remind yourself this, push harder, and you'll be unstoppable in the long term. Focus on what you're doing. This topic is connected to the previous one. When was the last time when you were using a timer and you were avoiding too much talk and excessive rest? It's totally fine to socialize during a training, but to a certain extent. For example, talking for a minute or two can be an act of respect to the others, while talking for 5, 10, 15 minutes can be a sign for totally the opposite. You get less volume during your training, while in the same time you risk your body to get cold and get injured. So that's why respect the others, respect you, your training and your goals. Shortly I'll say train now, socialize later. Follow your own pace. I remember back in 2012 that the majority of the skills that the top athletes were performing were not so advanced, which made me a favor because I was not putting my standards and my goals so high. However, for 10 years, the sport evolved a lot. The problem is that I also see a lot of new 12, 13 years old guys who are just coming into the sport, trying really hard skills from the beginning. For example, going for even cell planche or full planche without being able to make 10 push-ups, which is for sure a really incorrect way and a way that is just certainly uh, leading you to an injury. That's why it's important to follow your pace and your training should be reflecting your current level. By the way, we're almost heading to the end, so if you like this type of videos, hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, next one. Be unique. Don't compare yourself to the others and stay true to your style. Do you know what differs those athletes to the rest? No, it's not only their skills, but it's more about the uniqueness and personality that they have, not allowing any outside trend to influence that. However, with the social media, it's really easy to get trapped with uh, all those trends. So maybe right now, the trend of going to the bed and ending up in a full pledge may sound really interesting, may give you a lot of new random followers, but in the same time, you can lose a lot from the potential followers who stayed with you just because of you and your uniqueness. So that's why stay true to yourself and your style. Okay guys, and so now we go for the last one, which is be a better athlete, be a better person. It's interesting to see how all the things I mentioned are important for the sport, but they're also crucial for all other aspects of life. And once you start applying them in the sport, you see how it will overall shape your personality in a better way. You will need 10 years to realize something like this, and most of the things are pretty obvious, but here comes the difference between knowing and applying. And while knowing can be easily done by just watching a 10 minutes video, Applying is a matter of a lot of hard work in the long term. So guys, if you like this type of videos in which I'm a little bit more talkative, let me know by hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel. Pretty soon I'm thinking of making a Q&A video so you can ask me some questions down in the comment section. I'll try to answer some. And since recently I achieved 200,000 followers on Instagram, in order to celebrate that thing, I decided to give 20% discount on all my programs. They include exactly the fundamental things that I was talking into the video and also the discount is available for my personal coaching. More information about it down in the description. All the best, till the next time.